welcome to the green report today's focus design thinking and sustainability leadership over the past 10 years environmental social and governance investing has grown quickly according to some estimates the amount of professionally managed portfolios that have key esg assessment components integrated exceeds 17.5 trillion us dollars globally additionally the value of traded investment products related to esg that are offered to institutional and retail investors has surpassed 1 trillion US dollars and is still rising quickly on the world major financial markets. Sustainability refers to achieving our goals without compromising the capacity of coming generations to achieve their goals. We require social and economic resources in addition to natural resources. Environmentalism is only one aspect of sustainability. Socioeconomics is driving the market as the current economic climate is constantly changing. Organizations are being encouraged to figure out how to design a structure that is more purpose-driven. Developing top-down and bottom-up strategies and processes, as well as changing the culture from shareholder to stakeholder, are some of these difficulties. Sustainability, CSR, or environmental, social, and governance management leaders are the main teams driving these initiatives and putting change management procedures into place. Building a sustainable business that takes into account the economic, environmental, and social aspects of conducting business takes skill and conviction. To build the sustainable businesses that are innovative and resilient across their supply chain to the effects of climate change in the coming decade. Business owners and entrepreneurs cannot continue to use the conventional approach of starting businesses. Actions must be meaningful and measurable given the built environment's undeniable interconnectedness with the effects of climate change, health, and equity. These can be dealt with and these change agents can build a more human-centered organization with the aid of the tool of design thinking. This methodology will also assist in creating the innovative, adaptable, and continuous learning organization that today's market demands. In an ever-changing world and in the context of globalization and rapid technological progress, human life is becoming more and more complex. Because of this growing complexity, artistic, linguistic, mathematical and scientific skills no longer suffice to enable today's youth to develop their full potential. In order for us, humans to become active and connected citizens of the world while taking part in the building of sustainable societies that are sensitive to human and environmental issues, learners must acquire a multitude of skills, most of which are part of the 21st century skills framework. These skills include solving complex problems, innovation, teamwork, critical thinking, communication, systemic and prospective thinking and technological skills. The iterative and encompassing process of design thinking effectively requires the use of several competencies, it requires learners to ask questions, seek out information, collaborate with their peers and the community, to propose concrete ideas, to test and model solutions, all the while taking into account user needs. Professionals in sustainability management would benefit greatly from adding design thinking to their toolkit. This tool will be helpful in fostering a collaborative environment where ideas can flow more freely between various functional business groups, end users, and marketing experts. Not only does it help with solving problems in real life, but it also helps with defining different business challenges and coming up with fresh solutions by fusing empathy, creativity, and user feedback. The practical use of design thinking in everyday life and its application in diverse situations could enhance learning experiences and make them more motivating. Teams use design thinking, a non-linear, iterative process, to comprehend users, question presumptions, redefine problems, and develop original solutions for prototyping and testing. This method, which entails five steps namely, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test, is most beneficial when applied to problems that are unclear or unidentified. These five steps can be repeated to hone and improve our solutions throughout the process. They are not always sequential in the sense that they must occur in the same order. Avoid thinking of phases as being innately hierarchical or linear, rather, think of them as a journey with a direction and a destination in mind, sometimes with side stops or shortcuts. The inability of large corporations to be creative and develop new goods and services that meet the unmet needs of their customers led to the birth of design thinking. The design thinking methodology is fundamentally driven by and centered on the client. The ethnographic background, behavior, thinking, motivations, habits, and needs of people are taken into account during the design thinking process. Consider a person going about their daily business and all the various goods and services they come into contact with. The Sciences of the Artificial by Herbert Simon, published in 1969, served as the foundation for design thinking. He described design as a rational problem-solving tool and as an investigation into what things turn out to be. Although social factors were not initially included in this definition, it changed over time as designally thinking to design thinking. 
This change incorporated critical reflection in practice, which draws on expert knowledge and intuition to find solutions to issues. The phrase first gained popularity among business people in the 2000s. Seconds. Traditional design techniques were replaced by more strategic methods related to the business world in this methodology. But how precisely can design thinking be applied to teaching for sustainable development? Some strategies to start thinking about are as follows. Educational workshops for all stakeholders at every level to understand what design thinking is and how it will benefit them. Multidisciplinary collaborative teams, involving stakeholders from every level in developing any intended initiative that would affect them and their work. The addition of different teaching methods is advised at particular design thinking stages. For instance, during observation inspiration, problem solvers might be asked to frame the issue holistically by considering human needs and some non-human components of the study environment as well as by looking at the environment's quality and cleanliness like water, air, soil, economic resilience etc. Environmental problems are now influenced by the emotions of actual people and are no longer emotionally neutral or foreign to problem solvers. In order to properly present complex problems, the problem space created during design thinking appears to be broad, systemic, and analytical enough. The proposal of solutions to be taken into consideration for the situations under review benefits from a large and well-structured problem space. Finally, the interest in problem solving seems to stem from the human element of the problems and the challenge of team collaboration to solve problems that bother people. Thank you, don't forget to subscribe, stay tuned.